tangible problems. I always felt from as long as I can remember about the power of science, that it could be used to solve pressing issues or solve problems. When I studied chemistry at Princeton, it was so theoretical, unapplied, and I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe if I go into physics, it would get better. So I did and was grossly disappointed. We were studying wave propagation, and I couldn't understand this one problem, this one equation. So, like, so I went to the professor and said, well, what's this about? Like, where, where does this exist? Uh, and he said, well, oh, it actually doesn't exist. I just made it up. So it's like, oh, okay, well, so that's what we do here. And that was one of those turning points where I said, wow, what am I doing here? In the absolute abundance of resources, power, and human development and culture and everything, still there's many issues, namely the resource conflicts, poverty, war, deprivation. Survival with the awesome technology that we do have today, survival should not take a lot of time. When you really think about it, all of the wealth that we enjoy today for a modern standard of living relies on rocks, soil, sunlight, plants, water. Those are all abundant, yet the productive mechanism of society is what makes it scarce, artificially so. What if we can survive and thrive up to a modern standard of living, and not only that, at two hours a day of work and from local resources? How would that be? The most important part of open source ecology is this idea that with a small amount of resources and a small amount of money, uh, anybody should be able to create a high standard of living for themselves um, and do it in a way that doesn't require a whole lot of time, a whole lot of money. People can actually be empowered by the technology that we're creating here. So rather than, rather than a big corporation deciding uh, what machines can do for us, we can decide how we want machines to work for us. Instead of relying on other people to make things that we need, we can make everything that we need for ourselves and we can do it better than Walmart can do it, we can do it better than slave labor in China can do it. We can make the productive capacity that we need to live the lives that we want in our own backyards and we can do it in a sustainable way. We can make machines that we can use to create material abundance for ourselves and then we can show other people how to do it. We have 200 people get together and if they want to put together a self-sustaining community, they don't have that many options as far as coming up with the equipment and the machines for doing that. That's, that's where the open source ecology really comes in, is the cost of building these machines is about 10% of what you could buy it for commercially. You know, if you, you take a, a full-blown John Deere tractor, it, it's almost impossible for anybody to go out and try and build one of those themselves. I mean, that's just a very custom machine. But if you're able to go and take, you know, just off-the-shelf engines and go down to your hardware store and buy steel and, and build it yourself, like, like the lifetime, then that, that's much more realistic. The benefits of a localized economy are that the power stays within the community, the economic wealth, instead of your money, the earnings, going all the way down the river. What if we can internalize that, keep that wealth in by having all that productive mechanism built in? You, you produce the same, the, the wealth stays in, you don't have to work so hard. And you can have time for your family and kids or whatever else is more important to you. So it's a lot easier production-wise to just have one super compatible module the power cube right now works with both the life track and the CB press and the other machines that we have with the ironworker and the cold saw. So that provides a much simpler product ecology because one power unit serves multiple machines. There's one thing about just being able to look at machines that have been developed on site here and another thing to understand how the development process went through and what kind of documentation there is for these machines such that they can be replicated and improved on, right? Fortunately, we have that ability to have machine information in a digital format, and now we have telecom, the internet, to relay that information and have anyone just copy over the files and have access to it, the model, on their computer. So open source ecology tries to capture the open source nature of development and the fact that we're connected to um, to nature, to other people, to societal institutions, that all has to be considered if we we're talking about a paradigm to make a better world. Open source was clearly the, the, the trend, the emerging trend that was so powerful. Uh, demonstrate with open source software like Linux, the Linux platform, when 
a sufficient number of people come together on a project, that project simply becomes better than anything else. So we're transitioning that into the hardware space. So what would happen if people actually collaborate on making open source hardware? We have lots of technology out there, but to organize the technology in such a way that it's accessible without barriers to people, that's a very significant move forward. Now it's there for the individuals to organize themselves and to really dig deeply almost to what you would say a spiritual level in a way, to really change their attitudes and to take advantage of what is there and to move our civilization forward. I'm hopeful that humankind will arise to the occasion and seize the opportunity offered by this uh, development. Open source ecology is really about creating the next economy, the open source economy. And what's that mean? It's an economy that optimizes not only production, which the present economy is really good at, it's, it's effective in production, but distribution is not, not so great. And how do you do that? And that is by opening uh, so-called giving away <laughs> trade secrets for free or developing open source products for just about anything that we use. So imagine a scenario where, where now instead of corporations all competing, reinventing the wheel and so forth, a lot of competitive waste, what if everybody were to join together to make the best products most robust products that are open source that anyone has access to producing them and therefore we can run an economy in a collaborative way as opposed to a competitive wasteful way.